Have you ever wondered how the pros hit those long range shots and make those micro adjustments look so easy? Well, today I've got the best controller settings for you, as well as a little tip that I'll throw in for audio. You guys are definitely gonna wanna follow along in this video. Let's go ahead and get right into the controller settings right away. For aiming input devices, this is gonna be for controller players, like I said, so you have that broken aim assist, and it helps you hit those long range shots and make those smooth micro management adjustments when you're at long range. If you're a controller player, you know what I'm talking about. Mouse and keyboard players, if you use this, well, switch to controller because it's way better and more dominant in Call of Duty. Um, for the button layout, this is going to be all personal preference here, guys. It really is. Uh, most people play default. Most people play tactical. I would say if you play Call of Duty, you use one or the other, unless you don't have a scuff or a Battle Beaver controller and you're really playing like a bumper jumper or something like that. Me personally, I use a Battle Beaver controller. What that means is I have two buttons on the back, the programmable buttons. You can change them to whatever you want. So it allows you to aim, shoot, jump, melee, whatever it is, without taking your fingers off of the joysticks. You can use all those buttons at once. Um, and uh, it really just ups your gameplay. So if you want to check that out, the link's in the description down below. You can use code SLACK for 10% off. But besides the fact, I play tactical and flipped. What flipped is, obviously, is it switches your bumpers. So I use L2, R2, or L1, R1 to shoot. Um, like I said, I shoot with the bumpers instead of the triggers. I find it to be more comfortable. The flipped version is really all personal preference. But tacticals allow me to do multiple different things at once. Um, basically, I can melee on the back button. So say I make somebody weak and need a punch to finish them. Um, I can do that. And then I slide with my right stick. Um, and this really helps me to drop shot as well, like quickly um, and do a lot of different movement mechanics while, like I said, not removing my fingers off of the joysticks. Again, this is personal preference, but this is what I rock. For bumper ping, I have this to off. Like I said, flip is on. The stick layout preset, I have it set to default. Controller vibration, make sure you guys turn this off. Um, a lot of you players out there may be playing with vibration. I would highly recommend you guys turning this off. Um, and let me tell you a little bit why. Whenever you're shooting or getting caught off guard in Call of Duty, that controller vibration is going to make you probably overcorrect yourself just out of strictly reaction. Um, when you're having the vibration off, it really just helps everything kind of be more flow, be more calm. Um, and uh, I was a vibration user for a long, long time. And now that I've switched back to it being off, um, I've never been happier and I absolutely love it. For the dead zones, let's go ahead and hit show more on this. This is a setting that you guys must change while playing the beta or really any Call of Duty. Um, the defaults are actually set to 10 for the minimum and the right stick minimum. Um, so you're going to want to lower this. Let me explain the left stick here. So left stick, I lower all the way down to one. People are going to say, oh, stick drift, this and that, whatever, whatever. For the maximum, I have it at 80. And basically what this does is the target range that I have to hit on the left stick for me to hit full maximum sprint speed is at 80% of the controller ring. What that means is instead of it touching the top of my ring of my controller, I have to reach 80% and then I'm reaching full sprint speed. So the minimum, I don't need to push it hardly at all for me to start sprinting forward. Uh, then the maximum I have to hit is 80. So basically it just allows me to start sprinting sooner. And if you physically think about it, by the time I push it all the way to the edge, I'm already sprinting. Um, so it just helps me out. It's a small little, you know, kind of cheat code is what I like to call it. it helps with strafing, helps with sprinting, different things like that. It helps you speed up that whole process. For the right stick, you're going to want this minimum to be as low as you possibly can without your dead zone freaking out and you having like hella controller delay and it feeling all weird and, and stick drift and all things like that. So I have the minimum at, at three. After I use controllers for a long time, just any Sodi product really gives out. You kind of have to start upping this stick drift or upping the, uh, the stick minimum. Uh, I like to leave it at three. It helps your controller feel the most responsive and really feel like whenever you do make those micro uh, management like adjustments from far range, like the small little left to right, like when you're tracing an opponent, it helps you track a lot easier. And uh, for me, like I said, three feels very comfortable. It feels like almost right when I move the stick, it does it instantly. If you play with this and you move it up to like 20, you'll see what I mean. There's a small little delay and uh, it can get really annoying when you're trying to gun people across the map, like on the high rise gunfight, um, you know, from window to window, it can be really tough. But I think, like I said, I think three is very comfortable for me. Um, you can also play with these left and right triggers. I personally don't. I have hair triggers. So on the Battle Beaver, if you can see on my screen, if I barely tap this, um, it's like a mouse, right? Like that's all I have to push down. Um, but for this, basically it allows your controller to be more reactive, more sensitive. So again, instead of having to hold L2 or R2 or L1, R1 all the way down, it starts doing it sooner. So you can play around with this if you want. Like I said, I have the hair triggers. So mine's instant no matter what. If I change this, it's really not going to do anything at all for me. 
Let's go ahead and head on over to the aiming. For the horizontal and vertical sensitivity, this is gonna be all personal preference, but I'm gonna give you guys my recommendation. I think for sensitivity in Call of Duty, you're gonna have those flashy players and those cracked out players that play on super fast sensitivities. But if you're a casual player trying to improve and trying to get better at the game, I would not go any further than 6-6. I've been a professional for over 10 plus years with seven championships, and I've rocked 6-6 six, six my entire career. I've never had a problem with people, you know, running left to right and me getting like, feeling like I'm on too slow of a sensitivity. And then also at those long range and close range gunfights, I can track the players just fine. I think this is a great sensitivity for any player, even a 5-5 five, five potentially, um, to hit those long range shots and then up close, still be able to compete and uh, keep up with the opponents when they're sliding across from you. So sensitivity is a big one that helps your shot like crazy and you're not gonna wanna play on too fast of a sensitivity no matter what, even if you wanna be cracked out. Um, for the sensitivity multiplier, I have this at one. You can play with this if you start getting into the higher sensitivities. What you'll see players do is up their sensitivity and low, lower their ADS multiplier. Basically, let's say you want to play on 10, 10 sensitivity, but you wanted to feel like a six multiplier. You can lower it down to like 0.75 and it feels something like that. Um, again, for the sensitivity multiplier, I don't touch this because I like to leave it at 661. It's a very comfortable sensitivity for me. For the vertical aim axis, do not touch this unless you want to get turned on and get no kills. Um, just don't, don't touch that at all. Just leave it at one. Leave it flat where it is. For tactical stance sensitivity, I have this at one. There's a new setting that they've added. A lot of people aren't fans of the tactical stance. I personally am not either, but I'm just leaving it at one for right now. For aim response curve type, if you follow Call of Duty since 2019 and Modern Warfare, they added this setting. Dynamic is extremely broken. Basically, it'll allow your left to right when you're spinning in a circle, it will speed up when you're whipping your sticks. It'll kind of help you get in that flow state and help you easily track your opponents at those medium and long ranges. Definitely put this on and leave that curve slope scale to one. Um, for the focus, I leave this to one. ADS sensitivity transition timing at instant. Then custom sensitivity per zoom. You can get all crazy with it if you want on different scopes and different things like that. Um, but I, I, again, I don't touch this. I have it completely off um, and there's no, no reason for it. Target aim assist. Make sure it's on. It's broken. Like I told you, if you're on controller, turn it on. If you're playing Call of Duty and want to dominate, make sure this is on. Um, this is one that's uh, it's a lot of, that's talked about a lot, right? The aim assist type. You'll see a lot of players playing Black Ops and uh, you know people will sit there and say it's stickier aim assist whatever whatever usually that setting can sometimes be broken but the way i view it is call of duty is made to be on the default this is the aim assist that the company and the people have worked on the most and i leave it at default i think it feels literally amazing right like i i have no problem tracking people up close uh, medium range long range making those micromanagement adjustments like i was saying i think it feels great you can play around with this one you can look at black ops if you want i want to touch precision or focusing but uh, this is just traditional aim with slowdown. You're the target used in Modern Warfare games. I feel like it's not broken. It feels perfect. And uh, it's right where it needs to be. For motion sensor behavior, have this off. Uh, then for the motion sensor advanced, just leave that. Um, for gameplay, this is again going to be personal preference. But for me, I rock automatic tactical sprint. I'm not a competitive player in the CDL anymore. If you're trying to compete, you really can't use this setting because most of the time it's GA'd. But this allows me to hit those slide cancels, make everything a lot more fluent and smooth. And uh, basically all you have to do is push your left stick forward and you're double sprinting. Uh, for auto move forward, I have off. For tactical sprint behavior, I have a double tap. Grounded mantle, I have on. Automatic airborne mantle, I have partial. Automatic ground mantle, off. Inverse slide and dive behavior, I have standard. Some people were playing with this on tap, uh, but in this new game, now that you can slide cancel, you're gonna wanna have that on standard, not on tap anymore. Plunging underwater, I have trigger. Running door bash on. Ledge climb mantle, uh, I have mantle only. Aim down side behaviors hold, obviously. Change zoom, shared input, uh, sprint, tactical sprint focus. Equipment behaviors hold. All these are pretty self-explanatory, guys, to be completely honest with you. I don't need to go too, through too many of these. Um, uh, all the vehicle behaviors and stuff like that and the overlay behaviors. Um, but that's gonna do it for the aim settings. So let's go ahead and hop on over to the audio. The audio settings and the audio mix that I've been enjoying, and I've, I've had a lot of different optimizers and people that know what they're talking about, I've always used home theater. I feel like it has the best audio frequency balance between those loud noises and those you know, very quiet noises like footsteps and things like that over your gunshot, right? So it's got a good balance uh, where you can still hear everything that's going on around you as well as your gun, as well as airstrikes, as well as footsteps. So. Uh, play around with it. A lot of people will maybe try headphones or different things like that, but I've been using home theater for a long, long time, and I feel like it's got a very good frequency. For master volume, I have it sitting at 80. Gameplay music volume, make sure you always turn this off. It's just going to add extra clutter and useless sound, whether you're at the main menu or you're in the game clutching and search and destroy. You don't need to hear all that game sound. It's very pointless. Dialogue volume, I have it at 50. Effects volume at 100. 
voice chat volume. This is personal preference. If you want to hear those people screaming in game chat, I have it down to 12 because it's super loud and annoying sometimes on stream or while I'm playing. Um, and then for the cinematic music volume, again, I have it at zero. Uh, voice chat I have on and all these preferences are pretty much self-explanatory and all personal preference. Those are the best tips for aiming and hearing all the footsteps around you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to drop a like, comment down below what other types of videos you guys would like to see and subscribe. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you guys later. Peace.